So this is sort of like that awkward moment when you're with your new love interest and you run into your ex and it's very clear that your new love interest is a big improvement. I say that because I'm with the outgoing Nissan X-Trail and the all new fourth generation 2023 Nissan X-Trail coming to showroom soon, but we at Drive have been given a very early sneak peek. Before we find out what's changed in X-Trail land, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you stay up to date with all new car content. The X-Trail range kicks off at almost $37,000 before on-road costs and tops out with this, the flagship TIL grade, which is priced at almost $53,000 before on-road costs. The key things that you need to know is that this car has more power, more torque, more cool technology and helpful safety features and more clever cabin storage. Plus, no offense, but it looks a whole lot better too. Let's check out the changes in more detail. So something important to note before I start taking you through this car is that it is a production trial model, which means it's mostly complete, but some things may change between this version and the one that lands in showroom. So as long as you keep that in mind, we can get going. And one of the things to note about this is obviously the design is really impactful. You've got a much larger grill and look, vents that actually take air in as opposed to these vents which are closed and overall this is a more aerodynamic car and what that means is less wind noise and better fuel economy so it's an improvement of about 0.5 of a liter per 100 kilometers and as we know in these times that's everything otherwise the overall dimensions of this car aren't that different to this car so it's a little bit wider a little bit taller but the wheelbase is actually the same and the car is actually shorter than the outgoing model but what the difference really is is that the interior space works a lot harder and i'll show you what i mean in a second Oh, and one last thing for bigger families, obviously, traditionally, you've been able to get seven seats in the X-Trail. That hasn't changed. You still get the option of five or seven seats in the lower grades. So as I said before, the size difference between these two cars isn't actually all that great. And in some instances, this is actually smaller on paper. But what they have done is that the tweaks that they've made have made it an overall more practical car. I'll show you what I mean with one example. So this door opening here, pretty good it's around 80 to 85 degrees but there is a fair bit of bulk through here and so the actual opening feels a little bit smaller and your clearance just isn't as good moving over to the new car however now i don't have my protractor on me but i'm calling that a clean 90 degrees maybe a little bit of rounding up in that case but the difference is this is really streamlined so my opening and access to the back seat is incredible it's really clear and it's nice clearance as well so if you're loading and unloading little kids that's a huge win and in addition for parents this is new free sunshades although not really free because it's only on the most expensive grade but still just more bang for your buck now obviously your available space changes whether you opt for five or seven seats but in this grade you only get five seats so this rear bench here slides forward and back it tilts forward as well so you have maximum configurability these two outboard seats are heated and this seat folds 40 20 40 which means you can just you know fold this segment down if you have two child seats in here or you can fold them all down have none of them down whatever you like and in addition you get tri-zone climate control as well but really it's in the boot where things start to get very exciting so let's check that out and before i go i will say sitting back in my regular position back here. I've got good head clearance and good leg room. Keep in mind, even though there are seven seats possibly in this car, it is a medium SUV still. So it's not huge back here, but it's certainly very comfortable. Now on paper, this boot is actually smaller than the old X-Trails, but it's only by about five liters. So really who's keeping count? And it carries on the twin board setup of previous X-Trail generations. That just means there are two boards back here as advertised. You can raise them both, you can lower them both, you can have one lowered, one raised, and that allows for 16 different configurations. I have a life, so I can't show you all of those right now. You just have to take my word for it, but I can show you how it lowers down and under the floor is a space saver spare wheel. One extra thing that they've told me here at Nissan is that this material in the boot is now easier to clean apparently. So dog owners, you're welcome. All X-Trail grades have continuously variable automatic transmissions and petrol engines, but you do get the choice of front wheel drive or all wheel drive, and there's no more manual option. All variants are powered by a 2.5 litre non-turbo four-cylinder petrol engine capable of 135 kilowatts of power and 245 newton metres of torque. 
That's an increase of 9 kilowatts and 19 newton meters over the outgoing model. And there's now also a 2000 kilogram towing capacity, which is 500 kilograms more than the old X-Trail. So one of the problems with the old X-Trail is that it lacked a lot of modern safety equipment as standard from the base grade. And I can happily tell you the new X-Trail fixes that problem and then some. You get a really great span of equipment from the entry level model. And that includes things like a rear cross traffic alert, active emergency lane keeping and blind spot monitoring, and intelligent cruise control. Plus the autonomous emergency braking system can detect pedestrians, cyclists, and it can function at junctions and in reverse. So that's stuff that's really over and above the competitors from the base grade. There's also seven airbags in here because there are a few things in life you can never have too much of and that's love, laughter and airbags. And so the addition that's over and above competitors in this car is something called the front far side airbag. And that actually what it does is stops the front seat occupants from hitting each other in the event of a collision. So fingers crossed you will never have to test it or even see it, but it's really nice to know it's there. So the big difference in the front seat of the new X-Trail is screens, lots of big, shiny, high-res screens. And that was something that the old X-Trail lacked a little bit. The infotainment felt a bit dated. That's been fixed, thank God. So on the dash here, you've got this huge 12.3 inch touch screen where you run most of your functions out of, and that's matched by a 12.3 inch driver display as well. And you can't see it on camera, but there's also a 10.8 inch uh, head up display, which is pretty big for the class. And, and even on the lower grades, this is an eight inch unit. So it still exists in this little pop-up. It's just that the screen's a little bit smaller and you've got some dials either side and you've just got modern additions like a wireless charging pad and wireless Apple CarPlay. And here's something the old X-Trail definitely didn't have. And on that note, a lot of other cars in this class don't have it either. And that's a smart rear view mirror. And what that means is that when you have people in the back seat or luggage in the boot and it's blocking your rearward vision, this car can use footage from a rear mounted camera to augment your view so you have a clear shot at what's behind you. I'll show you how it works. There you go. So you can see whatever it is that's behind you, even if your dog's going nuts in the boot. Now the old X-Trail had an overhead view monitor which made it stand up from the competition and the new X-Trail has one too, it's just a lot crisper which is nice to see. And of course one of the biggest differences between the outgoing X-Trail and the new generation X-Trail is that the new one comes in hybrid form. So the hybrid X-Trail is due in showrooms a little bit after the internal combustion engine X-Trail so we're predicting around Q1 2023 but we'll keep you updated as to that launch timing. And Nissan's e-power technology is really interesting in that it functions quite differently to the hybrids you might be familiar with from Toyota. The engine actually powers only the battery so it is much more like an electric car than some other hybrids hybrids and it's a really interesting drive experience but that's for later in the meantime you can catch this new 2023 x trail in showrooms from q4 2022 and head to drive.com.au for all the updates on launch timing what we think and the full review if you enjoyed this video then show us by liking it and subscribing to our channel and make sure you hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes live thanks for watching